Hi, my name is Adrian Mazilu, and in this video, I will draw a parallel between the interest rates and the major indices from 2008 till June 2017. Before we start, please note that this video is not a financial advice, and the data presented is based on my personal research. So, why are the big investors making money and you are just a spectator? This is the question I've asked many of my partners the first time we met. The stock market has different connotations for every person, but the percentage results in the last eight years are impossible to ignore. First, let's take a look at the interest rate of the U.S. dollar. From around 4% in 2008, we can see a drop to 0% in 2009. This is due to the fact that Fed, Federal Reserve, needed low rates to implement the quantitative easing program and an economic stimulus to get U.S. economy back on track. Keep in mind that from late 2008 till late 2014, through the quantitative easing program, Fed has released around $3.5 trillion. Wait, what is the quantitative easing program? It is a monetary policy in which central bank creates new electronic money in order to buy government bonds or other financial assets to stimulate the economy. The rules of the game are simple. In the end, Fed is lowering rates and injects tens of billions of dollars every month in the economy. And what does this mean? It is easy to take loans, but savings are discouraged. In the same time, the U.S. dollar purchasing power is lowering, mostly due to inflation. The main objective is to have new investments, job creation, and, probably the most important, a rise in consumption spending. All of these goals were reached in the U.S. quantitative easing program. But let's focus more on consumption. What are people actually consuming? Primary goods, goods that improve the quality of living, and luxury goods. If we dig down, we can easily observe that for all of these goods categories, there are just a few representative companies that absorb almost all the consumption. These specific companies had some good years of sales, right? Considering this, the indices formed by these stocks should have increased in price as well. And this is precisely what happened. Take a look at US 30, or Dow Jones Industrial Average. It is the most important index in U.S. NASDAQ 100, an index composed of the 100 most popular tech companies in U.S. And the S&P 500 measures the value of stocks of the 500 largest corporations by market capitalization. We saw the quantitative easing in U.S. Now, let's take a look at what happened in the European Union. At this moment, the EU interest rate is 0% because European Central Bank is in the middle of its own quantitative easing program. But let's go back to 2008, when EU Central Bank interest rate for Euro was also around 4% and dropped close to around 1% in 2009. EU started to use the quantitative easing program in 2015 injecting around 60 to 80 billions euro per month and the plan is to stop it in December 2017. It was originally approximated at a total of around 1.1 trillion euro but due to the extension of the program the total amount will be much bigger. The basic rules and the main objectives are the same that the US Fed had used. We can say that European quantitative easing is actually a copy of what the Fed did in the U.S. So, this being said, let's take a look at the evolution of the major European indices from 2008 till now. FTSE is a share index of the 100 companies listed on the London Stock Exchange with the highest market capitalization. CAC40 is the French index that represents a capitalization weighted companies and DAX 30, the German stock index. Similar quantitative easing programs are happening in many other countries of the world. For example, Japan, where the patterns of the program are almost the same. So far, it is clear that investing would have been a way better idea than savings. 
But why didn't everybody do that? Well, when people hear about investing in stocks on financial markets, their first thought is a no. It seems to be too risky and complicated. There is no time for that. Okay, just think about the following example. Click on Buy US 100 in 2009, and a click on Close Trade Now would have meant 370% profit. Let's check in detail how much some of the stocks forming the NASDAQ 100 index has grown in that period. Sure, it's not that simple, and the risks are really there. But this is what investing means, taking risks to have the opportunity of making a profit. The most important thing you need to realize is that people are far behind when it comes to understanding the world economy and how the financial world works is not as simple as it was 200 years ago. And these things are becoming much more complex day by day. Thousands of derivatives and all sorts of complex financial instruments that are really influencing your own finances. So you really need to understand what are the things that are affecting you, what are the economic cycles, the central bank decisions, and so on. The purpose of this video is not to convince you to make an investment decision in the very next second. The idea is simple. The economy is a game, even if we don't believe it. It has its own rules. If you can understand what influences what and how the capitals are moving around, you will start seeing that investing in financial markets is not a gamble, but a logical reaction to what's happening in the current economic world. So, my advice is this. Start small. Find a good broker and open a demo account. Find the people that are doing this and speak to them. See what are the ideas that they have. Check forums, videos, and financial websites. Just give it a shot to understand how things work. Don't rush it. Keep in mind that financial markets are affecting us not only in a negative way, but also in a positive one it is generating a lot of opportunities. And I will leave you with this question. If you can't trust to invest in a company like Apple, which is the biggest company in the world in terms of market capitalization and the number one brand in the world, what else is there to trust? Hope you found this video useful. More materials you can find on sales-am.com or adrianmazilu.com. See you soon.